Mike John Oaks here with Hexer's Hot Rods here in our Homer City, Pennsylvania location. And today we bring you our latest addition to our inventory. This is a 1968 Chevrolet uh, Nova. This is a SS styled car. You'll see all the SS badging as we walk around it. Uh, our car also has the steel SS hood on it here with the louvers and everything looks good as far as that goes. Um, our car's done obviously here in the white exterior. It's got the black stripes on it both on the hood as well as back on the rear deck lid as it should. Um, our car also has 396. Uh, these are the side marker bezels that you can get for those. Now that is not actually what's in this four motor. Uh, it does have a big block but they have the 396 fender uh, or the side marker bezels there anyways. Uh, also, uh, you'll see on our car, we've got Super Sport badging down here on the lower back uh, corner of the fender here. And then as far as our body, um, we can look at it down the side. We can see it's nice and straight. See that everything lines up. All of our elevations are on on this car. As far as our gaps, you can see those also very uniform front side versus the back side driver's side mirror you can see we've got the painted drip rail moldings here that kind of blend in with everything as well as all your moldings around your windows all painted up glass on this car is in excellent condition we don't have any cracks i don't see any scratches or um, any chips or anything not in the uh, wing window not in the side glass or in the quarter glass either all of that is in excellent shape. When we open our door up, you'll see the interior. Very nice black vinyl interior, front bucket seats. You've got the factory four-speed center console, uh, the factory dash and instrumentation, which would have the uh, tachometer in it, the speedo, and the clock up there in the dash. Then, of course, in the factory four-speed center console, you're going to have your four-gauge cluster there, which is going to be your fuel gauge, your battery gauge, uh, water temperature, and oil pressure. Now, this car also has an aftermarket uh, water temperature gauge, too, so I'm going to say that the water gauge that's in it probably it may not be accurate or it may not just work. That's why they have the additional gauge. Rear quarter panel, again, nice and straight. All the panels on the car, very, very nice and straight. Wheels and tires, you can see 15-inch wheels. They're American Racing Torque Thrust wheels. They've got the gray magnesium painted centers on them. And then 205 15s on the front to 25 15s on the back. As we come around the rear of the car, you'll see the trunk lid itself. It's adjusted very nice on this car. You see the gaps the whole way around, very uniform. See the black stripes on the rear deck lid also. Rear glass in good shape too. Molding around there, the bright work, that's in good shape too. You see the chrome bumper down below. See the SS tail panel emblem here along the black cladding. Your tail lights themselves. Lenses and bezels around there in pretty good shape. First equip back here on the trunk lid also. Now we are going to go ahead and open our trunk up. We'll take a look and see what that looks like inside. So first thing is the lock actually works, the latch. Um, the hinges as well as the spring work. It holds everything up all on its own as it should. Your trunk seal and weather strip around here, all in great shape, nice and soft. You don't see any cracks or pieces torn out of it. Good and solid the whole way around trunk itself good and solid you see a trunk mat you see the floor mats in here also and you can see that they have moved the battery to the back here now this is an optima red top it's got all of your uh, your quick disconnect and everything there with all your wiring run to it looks like it's done real nice and neat so again they've uh, neatened things up there and taken it out of the front of the car there to uh, i guess make a little bit of room up there for the engine and so forth so we close the trunk lid up, it closes nice and easy. Like I said, gaps and elevations with your quarter panel are really, really good on this particular car. As we come around the, the passenger side, you'll notice they put the Nova script emblem back here on the quarter panel. As we come around, again, you're gonna see the uh, side of the body here, nice and straight on the passenger side. Passenger side mirror over here, just like we saw on the driver's side. And glass also, you'll see 
looks to be in great shape. Gaps on our passenger door. Again, very tight gaps and they're very uniform front to back. We'll just take a quick peek since we're on this side. Again, you'll just get to see it from this side here. Again, your seat upholstery is in great condition. No rips, tears. You've got all of your seat belts front and rear. Uh, and again, a, a Hurst shifter to go along with that Hurst equipped badging that's on the trunk lid there. The door shuts nice and easy. The front windshield, the glass on that is in great shape. You can see it's tinted at the top there also. And your moldings, your bright work around that is in great condition also. The matching 396 side marker bezel there also. And then we'll come around the front and take a look. Now you can see chrome front bumper here. See those stripes that were blown on this front hood here? Very nice condition. See the hood pins here. See your louvers there for your SS hood all of which is in very good shape. And you see your gaps the whole way around on your hood. Again, the hood's been adjusted very, very well in this car. As far as our front grille here, you see it's all done in black here. All solid, all intact here. There's nothing broke on it. No pieces out of it. It's all there. You've got the SS emblem right in the front. Of course, you've got your traditional sealed beam headlights there. So your high and low beam, all one unit. You've got your uh, turn signal or your parking lights down underneath here uh, in your front bumper there. We're going to go ahead and take a look at what we have underneath the hood next. We'll take and remove our hood pins and then we'll go ahead and raise our hood up. So first thing, when we look underneath the hood, you can see the underside of the hood's in very nice shape too, all painted black underneath. You see all the insulation here tucked up in as it should be. Then we'll get to the engine as you see in here. As you notice, it is a big block motor. Now this is a 454 cubic inch big block Chevrolet engine. You notice it's got the chrome air cleaner on top. It's got the valve covers in chrome also. Breather, PCV valve, uh, all intact there. Edelbrock Performer ZO intake, aluminum intake, and you have a Demon, uh, it's a dual feed four barrel carburetor with an electric choke. Now this car has aftermarket air conditioning. So aftermarket's usually a lot more efficient than what your factory would be. So that's what you've got here. All of your lines are all hooked up. The belts are all run. So you've got functioning AC on this car. Got aluminum B-Cool radiator along with the B-Cool aluminum radiator overflow tank. Um, you've got uh, the chrome pulleys here too. Um, and as far as exhaust work, you've got long tube ceramic coat headers dual exhaust the whole way back um, complete with tailpipes out the back of the car as far as the ignition system on this car everything's been upgraded to MSD components so you've got an MSD distributor uh, at the back of the motor MSD 6AL box with an MSD blaster 2 coil you also have a set of MSD superconductor 8.5 millimeter plug wires on this vehicle also so again, all of that's going to help it fire better. Uh, your carburetor, obviously, is better fuel delivery. That, along with the intake, and of course, the long tube headers and exhaust, going to help it breathe a lot better also on this vehicle. So that's pretty much everything on the uh, under the hood here. Now, this is a power steering car, um, so you know we'll go over that those options whenever we get to the bottom of the car as we show you those components. But matched up behind this engine, you're going to have a Saginaw four-speed manual transmission. And then for the rear end, you're going to have a 12-volt GM rear end. It's a posi unit in there, and it's a 373 gear. So we've been around the outside of the car. We've been in it, and we've been under the hood on this car. So the next thing we're going to do is get it on the lift so that we can go through the underside of the car with you next. All right, now that we're underneath our 1968 uh, Chevrolet Nova here, the SS style car, um, we're going to go through the underside here, show you exactly what we have as far as uh, drive line, steering, suspension, braking components, all that stuff, and to give the floors a, a once over here and you know show you exactly what we have underneath here. So we'll start with, uh, as I've been doing lately now, we're going to go ahead and just kind of run through the drive line here. Uh, this is a big block motor. Uh, it is a non-original 
454 cubic inch big block Chevy. Um, that is backed up by a Saginaw four speed manual transmission, bell housing here, and the flywheel cover all intact. Uh, the, or the engine oil pan and the transmission the whole way back through, everything looks real good and dry back here. Now as far as your drive shaft, obviously it's going to be a balanced unit. You see the uh, weights here that they put on it to do that. Uh, that's going to eliminate any kind of vibrations that you might have in the drive line. And then to finish out, uh, we've got this GM 12 volt rear. It is a posi unit and it's a 373 gear in that rear end. Um, now as far as suspension, uh, pretty much stock factory suspension on this car. You've got your standard, you know, stamped steel, uh, lower control arms and upper A arms. Uh, the uh, ball joints on those are all in great shape. You've got a front sway bar on this car. The sway bar bushings at the frame and at the sway bar end links, those are all in great shape. Steering components, once again, all factory stuff. You've got power steering, your drag link here in the center, and then your tie rods, all in great condition. Ball joints, the rubber dust boot covers all intact, and you can tell everything's been maintained very well. As far as braking components on the front of the car, it is a power brake car. We've got disc brakes up front. We've got drum brakes back on the rear of the car as well. Now, as we work our way back to the rear of the car for suspension, we've got multi-leaf rear suspension here. You've got the traction bars here too to help eliminate any kind of wheel hop you might have if you get on it decently there. And then we also have a set of air shocks back here too, easily uh, or easy to adjust your ride height back here just by using an air hose and pumping it up wherever you'd like to have it at there. Now as far as exhaust work, you can see we've got long tube ceramic coated headers, got nice big exhaust back here, nice hangers everywhere and nice exhaust clamps, uh, a turbo style muffler, and then of course you've got the uh, right uh, type of uh, tailpipes here that go up over top of the rear end and then they exit between the leaf spring and the rear quarter panel back there. And you can see the fuel tank back there, stock fuel tank, all of your mounting hardware, the straps and everything, it's in all good shape, no dents or dings, you can see it's been uh, you know, very well taken care of underneath here. As far as the framework, the, uh, your front subframe, real good condition, nice and straight, good and square back along the sides here. You notice that they have gone ahead and put in these subframe connectors. Now the nice thing about this is, if you ever wanted to take them out, you could do so um, by not doing a whole lot of work. They're just bolted in. A lot of times they'll bolt and or weld them in, uh, which then you have to do cutting. But again, no reason to take them out. They're gonna help stiffen the car up uh, tremendously. And again, these are all bolted in. Um, so that's gonna help, like I said, stiffen up that frame. And the floors. Floors are in really good condition on this car. You can see it's all the correct metal. You've got all your stamped floor pans here, all the bracings intact here as well. Um, your rockers and your pinch welds up along both sides of the car here. Super straight, good and solid the whole way back. Um, it's got the emergency brake all hooked up on it here. So all of your correct, uh, like your frame J hooks, the intermediate cables, rear cables, connectors, everything's all there and all functional. Um, the only place that I would see um, of any cutting or whatsoever here would be right here at the transmission. You see the tunnel here. Um, so that would maybe entitle me to think that maybe it had an automatic transmission and they swapped it over to the four speed. Um, so again, they did a good job of it. Um, so that's the only thing I see underneath here. Uh, and then the only other thing really to go over um, besides wheels and tires is with your drive shaft here, they did install a drive shaft loop. That's good for safety uh, reasons, obviously. If you were to lose a universal or something in this drive shaft, it'll keep the drive shaft up there safely instead of letting it come down underneath the car and possibly shooting up from underneath it. Uh, now as far as wheels and tires, that's the last thing to go over. We've got ourselves 15 inch wheels here on this car front and back. 
Um, they are American racing. They're the torque thrust wheels. They're the ones that have the uh, like the magnesium colored five spoke centers in them. So real nice look for this car. And then as far as tire sizes, we've got 20570 R15s on the front and 225 70 R15s on the back just to give it a little bit of rake there as far as the tires go. So that's pretty much it for underneath our car here.